What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. If you've made it to this video, I assume that you've applied for a data analyst position and the business has asked you to complete an Excel test. Therefore, in this video, we're going to go over an Excel test and we're going to cover some of the most common things that the businesses check. I'm going to have this file in my GitHub repo in the video description so you can do all these tasks with me as we go in the video. And before we jump into the video, if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, the first thing we do is we check how much time we have to complete the test. So these tests need to be completed in 15 minutes. Then we see the number of questions we have. So as you can see, we have 12 questions to complete. So this is telling me that I need to finish each question within a minute. And also I'm going to have three minutes at the end to evaluate my answers or to go back to a question I was not sure. If you get stuck in a question, then the best thing you can do is to move on to the next question. And at the end, if you have time, then you can go back to that question. The second thing I always do is I read my raw data just to make sure I understand what I'm doing. So as you can see, we have movies, there are genre, and then we have some monthly revenue data. Right, starting with the first question, I'm gonna move the questions down here. It says, make the table look more professional, presentable to the business. So here we don't have any clear instructions as to what we need to do. But what they are asking us is that if you were in a business scenario where you had to present this table, how would you show it to the business? So they want to test our knowledge in fonts, alignment, the number formatting, conditional formatting, adding titles and making this table more clean. So I'm going to show you a few things I was going to do in this question. The first thing I was going to do is that I was going to go into view and remove the grid lines. So we don't have the grid lines. The second thing I was going to do is to add a title. So I can right click into here, click insert, then I can merge all these cells. So I go back to home, I click on merge. And this is one cell now and the title could be revenue by movie for example then i can edit this by adding a nice color then i can also add bold and i can also increase the size of this title there you go next i was going to draw some borders so i can select the style i want so on these dotted lines then I can click somewhere, I can select my whole table and then down here again and then all borders. So now we have borders. Next, I was going to make the data all visible so you can see we can't see the whole name of the movie. We can either do it ourselves manually by increasing the size of the column or we can actually select the whole table and then double click at the end and this is going to make sure all data is visible. However, I'm going to do it a bit manually so we can see these numbers and the data a bit clear. Next, I was going to make these revenue numbers to be dollars. So the currency, for example. So I'm going to add the dollars. And as you can see now, they don't fit. So I can make them bigger. Also, the dot zero zero is not actually needed. So I can select everything again. And down here, I can add or remove zeros. So I'm going to remove two zeros so we don't have any decimal numbers. Next, I was going to select my titles and align them in the middle. And I was also going to make them bold maybe. And I think that's fine. And that should be enough for question number one. So again, what they wanted to test is our knowledge in fonts, alignment, numbers, and generally how we present the data to the business, how we make it more clean. The next question now, it says create column and row totals. So they want to test if we know how to create aggregated functions. So a row total is going to be here. So I can type in here totals. Then into genre, I'm not going to have anything because I cannot aggregate genre, but I can aggregate these numbers. By the way, let's make it a bit bigger so you see it clearer. 
So down here, we can type equals sum and then open brackets and then select what we want to sum and then close brackets. And then if I drag this number now to the right hand side, it's gonna sum. So if I click here and on the formula, I can see sum in the second column, then it's sum in the third column, etc., etc. Now I can select the whole line and I can also add the borders. So if I click over here, but I shouldn't have done it just yet because I'm also gonna add the totals into the columns. So I can say here totals and then equals some open brackets and then select the row total, close brackets. And then if I double click at this little square, it's actually gonna drag it itself down. And also I wanna sum the row totals. So if I drag it one more, we have all the totals for all movies. So now I need to edit my table. I can actually, because you can see the title is finishing here, but now I have totals. What I can do is that I can click on unmerge, sorry, merge again. So this is gonna unmerge, select the whole table and then merge it again. However, because we're gonna add more columns, if you skim read what you have to do, I'm not gonna do it just yet, I'm gonna do it again at the end. The other thing I wanted to show you is that this new column now doesn't have the same format as this column. So what I can do is that I can select all this column, I can click on Format Painter, this is going to copy the style of this column, and then if I click it here, you can see it readjusted straight away the formats of this column, the same as the formats of this column. So we have bolts and increased size and then a line in the middle for the title. And we also have the borders in this new column. Next, I want to select this row now. And because these are totals, I want to make them stand out. So I was going to make them bold and also increase the size just to indicate that these numbers are actually totals. They are not the month's values. Right, the next task we have is to create three new columns, the average, the mean, and the max. So we go here at the top, we click equals, average, open brackets, and then we select the months that we want to average. So this is gonna show us the average revenue per month for the first movie. And then if I double click it, it's gonna drag it all the way down and also I wanna have the totals average. And then if I make this bigger, we can see the average. So this is the average value. So we can say average, then we have the mean, and then we have the max. By the way, I can do this, click on Format Painter, and this is gonna have the same format. Here I can say equals, mean, open bracket, select the same values, monthly values, enter, then double click. Here we click equals, max, open bracket, then we select the first line, we close brackets, we click enter, then we double click. Then I can select these two, drag them down so we have the mean and the max for the totals. And I can also make the columns a bit bigger so all numbers are visible. Next, I want to add the borders so I can select all these and then click here into the all borders so we have the borders. Also, because this is average mean and max, if it was me doing this, I was going to add a different color because these are calculated columns. So I was going to do something like, you know, add a different background into these functions just to show that these are aggregated values. Maybe the totals, we can do the same, add a different color into the totals. This helps us distinguish that these columns are actually calculated columns. So there's a formula in them and these columns are our actions. Right, moving on, the next thing we have to do is to create a month over month column for the last month. So we want to compare this month with this month. So we come over here, we type in month over month, click enter, and the formula is going to be this month divided by this month. So current month divided by previous month, and then minus one, and this is telling us that the, from December to January, we had a 49% decrease in value. So we lost half of the value. And in order to make this a percentage, we can click on this percentage over here. We can also add two decimal places. We can double click here. So it's gonna go all the way down. And also we wanna drag it into totals. 
So you can see that the totals of January were actually 46% down versus the totals of December. So this is a good insight. Again, we can select this whole column and add the borders as we've done with everything else. Moving on to the next question, if we come down here, it says conditionally format the month over month column. So we come over here, we select the values of our column, we click on conditional formatting and then we select which conditional format we want to do. Now, they are not specifying exactly how they want to conditionally format this column. So again, they want to test your knowledge. There is a few ways of conditionally formatting columns. Two of my favorite ones are the color scales. So I select the first color scale. If I hover over it, it actually applies it just to show you how it works. So the first one, it picks the most negative value and it assigns the strongest red. So you can see minus 49 is red and then the highest one, which is like the 0% is green. We don't actually have a positive value there. So, oh, we do. 3.61 is the positive value. So that's the greenest it gets and everything else in between is a color scale between the red and the green. The next one is actually the other way around. So green is the highest negative and red is the highest positive. Uh, so these two are two of my favorite ones and the other ones I like is the data bus. So you can see on this one it adds these data bars and then for example the highest one is the minus 49. It takes almost all the bar and the positive one which is a 3.61 is actually not very visible. We can manually edit this. Let's make this like a 16% increase. So we are fudging the numbers now. So we can view it nicer. So if we come here, you can see there is a data bar on the right hand side with a positive value. Let's add another positive. Let's make this like a 67% increase and this one like a 45% increase just to view how it looks. So if we come here again, you can see we have the reds and the blues. If we want to change the colors, we can click this one, come over here, data bars, then click on more rules and then we can change our blue to be green, for example. And if you wanna change the negative value, which is the red, you can change it by clicking here and selecting a different color. But I'm gonna leave the green as positive and then the red as negative. Right, moving on, the next task we have, it says sort the data by totals descending. So we want to sort the data by this column over here. In order to do this now, we have to click over here and then into sort and filter, we need to add the filter. So now you see this arrow here where it allows us to filter the data. Then we can click over here in the totals and we can do sort by smallest or by largest. So let's test it. You can see these are the smallest values and then if we click again, these are the largest values. So the movie with the highest totals is actually Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now, one issue we created is that totals have now moved at the top. And since this is a formula, if you click and see what is summing, it's summing the first three cells, which is not actually the right values because we want it to be summing all of these down here. Also, the totals, if you see the totals now for all months, they went from 15 million to 300. And this is because it's the sum of these values and these values are summing the wrong data. In order to fix this now, I'll show you another way of sorting the data without having this issue. If we click back until we get the totals correctly, there we go, totals are at the bottom now and they're summing the right values. One thing we can do is that we can copy the totals and paste them as values. So if we paste them as values now, um, it's not actually going to change the formula because if you click on these cells, they are values now, they are not formulas. So if I do sort the data by largest, sorry, by uh, largest to smallest, you can see these values didn't change. However, because I want to keep totals at the bottom, 
Another way of sorting the data is that I can select the column I want to sort the data by, click on sort and filter, and then sort largest to smallest. Then we want to expand the whole section. So this is not only for this column, it's actually for the whole row. So if I click on sort, you can see that, oh, again, totals is at the top. So again, you get these issues with Excel, you're going to have to get creative. So because you're under time pressure, one thing I was going to do very quickly is that I was going to select this row and then click here and drag it at the bottom. So now it's at the right place and then I can delete this row. And there we go. We have sorted the data by totals and the totals column is actually at the end. Now, the last thing I was going to do is to refix my formatting. So very quickly, I was going to expand the merge here. And then I was going to select my whole table. So everything is selected and I was going to add the borders. Right, I'm going to stop this video here and finish the rest of the task in the next video, just because I want to keep videos short. In the next video, we are going to show VLOOKUPs and pivot tables and visuals. So check the link in the video description, which is going to take you in the next video. If you feel you've gained enough value out of this video, then I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching this video.